I don't know if this is going to focus in there on the wing or not. We're outside the paint booth and I'm looking in through the door right now and the plastic is just right there. I'm liable to focus on it, this stupid autofocus. It hunts back and forth just on its own. Well, anyway, I got the paint yesterday afternoon finally. The first paint supplier that I called up to order from, they strung me along for about a little over a week before they finally said they didn't have the right pigments to mix the color I wanted. They did give me the name of another paint company, a uh, paint supplier. I called them. They told me that they had everything and they'd get it out right away that afternoon. Well, it took them a week to get the paint delivered to the air cargo company that brought it down here. They called right away wanting payment for shipment, which we give them, and then they sat on it for a week before they shipped it down here, or up here, down here from Anchorage, wherever. We're south of Anchorage, so I guess it's down here. Well, anyway, I got to paint yesterday afternoon, so I spent the afternoon getting ready to paint here. I had to dig out my breather setup. That first stuff that I was spraying on there, the poly brush and the poly spray and the poly tone, that's all liquid vinyl. The solvents in it, the carrier solvent in it, is, is pretty noxious, but everything forms pretty good sized droplets and stuff when you paint. So I wore a respirator, just a regular chemical type respirator carbon filter and stuff to filter out the fumes and that was fine for that but this paint that I'm putting on there now is a polyurethane paint and that's got polyisocyanates or kyanates or whatever the heck that stuff's called it's basically super glue and that stuff forms really fine particles that will go through a filter and it actually bonds with liquid moisture and it'll bond and glue the tissue in your lung together so we well, got to have some kind of a, a mask or filter for that but even just a regular filter won't filter everything out on it so I've got a supplied air system I've got an air pump there and a long line and a hood that goes over my head so it's supplied with fresh air all the time while I'm painting the problem with that, of course, is I'm looking through a plastic lens all the time with it. Anyway, I got everything ready to paint. I'd come through here and cleaned out the paint booth the other day, blew it out, cleaned it up and everything, and then took some 120 grit sandpaper and scuffed, sanded the wing. I just went in there and blew it out again. Now I'm going to go in there and, and take the mop and mop the floor and get it wet so we don't get anything coming up off the floor. And then I'll take a tack cloth and go over that wing and I have to mix my paint up and we'll start spraying. It's later in the day than when I was spraying the poly stuff as I wanted to spray it when it was cool. This stuff, this regular paint, doesn't matter if it's cool or not. In fact, it's better if it's 70 degrees plus. It's cool outside today. It's less than 60 degrees outside today, but it's nice and warm in there. That has that greenhouse effect inside that paint booth, so I was actually sweating when I was working in there a little bit ago. Now the weather here today goes from clear blue sky and sunshine baking down on you one minute to pouring down rain the next. It's starting to rain right now so I can't leave the camera out here to video any of this process. So, yeah, I'm going to have to go put it away. It's starting to rain right now. Anyway, I'm ready to go in there and start uh, working on that thing again and we'll see if we can't get it painted today. It's raining on my head. Raining on my head. Raining on my head. Still raining? It's raining again or something? Yes. <laughs>
The old wing looks a little different now. It's definitely yellow. I got the first coat on it. I'm going to wait a few minutes now and put the second coat on it and then it should be good. That stuff covers pretty good. Well here's the setup I've got. See there's the blower. There's two blowers in there. One inflates the main columns and the other one inflates the building and that pot adds positive pressure in the building. And of course they've been out here for two weeks now running steady and they're not weatherproof or anything so first we add a couple of these Costco totes over them but I drug out this this is a hatch cover off of one of the boats for the engine compartment and that's just right to fit over them gets enough airflow underneath them and everything and keeps the weather off of them this tote here I've got covering up my fresh air supply yeah, that's my fresh air supply pump right there it just runs through a hose in there and then into uh, a hood yeah it was raining I I thought about leaving it inside the clean room here because this is positive pressure here this doesn't get any paint fumes in it but it does get paint fumes in it and reducer fumes and stuff like that because the paint is mixed in here all those fumes are in here and that would just get picked up and blown right into my hood and that would defeat the whole purpose of the hood well at least most of the purpose of the hood or part of the purpose of the hood so here's my air hose here and here's where it comes into the hood so this is not the hood that came with this outfit. This is a 3M hood. I bought a box of these. It's, uh, this hood that came with it is kind of not very good. This is the hood that came with it and it worked okay. I used it before for painting the fuselage and a bunch of other stuff that I've painted. But it's hard to see out of. They've got plastic lenses to put over the front of this plastic lens so you can clean the lens but this plastic lens gives you a distorted view anyway and when you're wearing glasses underneath it it's really bad and then when you put the protective cover over the top of it then it's even worse so this thing worked but not very good I wasn't very happy with it I ordered a bunch of these 3M hoods that are basically dis disposable but they're better hoods than that one and they come with a plastic cover over the front of it there to protect the lens but you tear it off when you get ready to use the hood and that thing works pretty good so it fills up and balloons up with the air pressure coming through there keeps it from fogging up inside worst part of it is is that well this hose is corrugated and it whistles in there like a train whistle and then of course you got the air rushing in there anyway so it's hard to hear other things that are going on with your paint paint gun and stuff like when it starts sucking air and whatnot but it's worth it to keep from breathing those fumes well, here's inside the paint paint room itself uh, I think that thing looked pretty good I haven't gone over it every square inch of it yet it needs another coat there with that white underneath that covers pretty good but there was a couple spots in there that where I went through the white where there was a couple of lumps on there and and went into the silver underneath a little bit so there's a couple of spots that I'm gonna have to well, it wouldn't hurt any to put a, the second coat on. But it looks a lot more like it does now than it did before. That makes me happy. The only problem I've got now is I got a hold of my mechanic and he sent me a message. He's in the middle of haying season and he's planning on coming up about the 15th of July. Well, today is the 2nd of July. I was hoping he'd be up here a few days earlier, maybe the 10th or something like that, or even earlier than that. Cause this wing is going to need a couple of days to, for that paint to harden up to, uh, to where we can work on it. Cause I've got to lay it down on the sawhorses. Uh, I've got to cut out some of the inspection covers on this side, uh, run my cables and stuff, and I've got to put the fuel tank in it and a few other things. Uh, and then, of course, we've got to haul it down to the hangar to put it on the airplane. So anyway, that's a, a good thing. That thing's coming along, getting painted. Starting to rain again now.
That took a lot longer than I expected, but I got that wing painted. I did the first coat and then I went in the house and had a sandwich and relaxed for a few minutes while they let it flash off a little bit before coming out and doing the second coat. But I got the second coat all on there and as far as I can tell, that looks pretty good. Let's see what we got here. It's yellow anyway. Everything's yellow. The floor is yellow. I don't see any boogers or anything on the wing. Well, I'll have to go around it again. Without my headset on, my head cover on, when I got eyes that are clear. So you got yellow everywhere. See how well that thing uh, pressurizes in there. Now I had these two vent covers off on this, on this side here and so air was able to go out those two vent covers and there's a lot of overspray, a lot of yellow on the felt on both of those. And I bought a fan with a hose for drawing air out. Before what I did is I got an old furnace fan, built a box for it and stuck it in there and used it to suck the overspray out and stuff and that worked okay but it got left out in the weather for a couple of years. I didn't notice it. Uh, somebody cleaned out my shed and set it outside but I found one of these evacuation fans, uh, explosion proof one and I was hoping I could use that and suck most of that stuff out of there but it sucks the building down unless I leave both the doors open on both ends and that defeats the purpose of having a closed in paint booth. So anyway like I said we got yellow everywhere and, and that is a positive pressure in there so it's pushing that uh, stuff out. You look down here in this corner where these zippers are and see how much of that overspray got pushed out through that opening there. Of course that plastic is yellow, the floor is yellow, uh, and it's sticky on the floor. It's This stuff is sticky unlike that poly spray stuff. You'd think the stuff that was a vinyl uh, would stick to everything, but it didn't, but this stuff does. And you can see all of the threads where all the air leaks out through this building, like right there. That's underneath that vent window, but there's a spot right there where the overspray came out. Another spot right there. Most of it's all down here. Low, I don't see anything. Oh, well, up high here underneath that plastic, there's some there, but that's where that, I guess that's an emergency evacuation window or something, but that whole uh, panel right there comes out. It's just Velcroed in, so the top of that is is loose. There's corners up there loose, so we got overspray that came out there, and then some down here at the bottom where the seam is. And even, even here, on this, uh, this is the inboard window panel for the paint booth part itself. We've got little spots where the yellow is coming out, where the air gets comes through the stitching and stuff on there. Nothing on here. This is the clean <laughs> room here. Funny. Okay, well here it is. Here's the wing and it is yellow. So I'm going to let this hang for a couple of days now at least before I do anything with it. If uh, mechanic's not going to be here till the 15th, I get plenty of time to let this paint set up hard on this before we start moving it. Well, I think it looks pretty darn good so far. Yeah, it's still tacky. That paint's still flowing out. Going to flow out for a while, especially as cool as it is here. Now it's warm in here, but it's cooler than it was. It's only, probably only 70 degrees, if that, in here now. Alright, that's enough of that wing. I'm done with it for a while now. Well, let's go see what this wing looks like today. I got it painted yesterday and it's had a chance to set overnight. Oh, well, let's go take a look at it and see how it looks now. Let's see if I can get in there. There's a zipper down there. Huh. A little little drip right there, a little run right there, but this uh, wing root looks pretty darn good. And it doesn't really matter because it's not going to show. 
goes up against the fuselage and then it's covered up so nobody will ever see that except me and whoever works on it so I took the masking and stuff out of it this is a fuel tank bay I gotta get the fuel tank put back in there but this is just gorgeous here how this turned out shiny smooth no rips no drums no errors fantastic you can see the tapes you can see the lacing cord right there through it and here's where the tape where I shrunk the tape a little too much I had my iron a little bit too hot when I stuck it on there putting the pink edges down but pretty 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 so like I said I took the masking I had here in the landing light bay out and that nothing got in there that looks pretty good no overspray in there this is where the pulley for the aileron upper aileron comes out this will be cut out in here cover goes over that that's a little patch I added there for a bumper for where the turnbuckle for the cable bangs onto the trailing edge here We're going to have to find the hole. That's so smooth they can't even find it. There's a hole in the wingtip bow there where, oh there it is right, maybe that's it, I don't know. We'll have to feel that. Anyway, the hole there where the wire goes for the uh, nav light. We've got the patches on here for punching the holes in there when I tried to make a wing rotator there. On this one here, in this forward spar, that one's going to get punched out again because that's where the screw that holds the nav light on there goes. This one here is the rear one. That's going to stay there. And these don't look quite so bad now that you got paint on them. These little doilies over the seaplane grommets. Little paint does wonder for hiding ugly. And here's the hinge for the aileron. Got the inspection cover panel here, the inspection cover ring here for the outboard one. Neither one of these are going to get cut out. Again, I got the landing light bay looks good. And here's the new tie down, the hurricane tie down, and there's the vinyl patch that I put over that. This is where the aileron cable is going to come out. I took the tape off of these last night, or this morning I guess, this morning I took about tape off of those. And these covers here for the strut attach fittings, they look a lot better now that they got some paint over them too. This cover here will get cut out and get a cover put over it, a metal cover put over it. That's one of the inspection covers that gets opened up. And of course this one here gets opened up and to get a cover square cover that goes or rectangular cover that goes over it well, we barely see you know, whether this will show up or not by naked eye I can barely see where these tapes come up for these short ribs they all blended in pretty nice I'm not trying to cover those up and make it look like a metal airplane or anything like that. It's, that's not the purpose of that. That's just to make it as smooth as possible. And it looks pretty darn good. This is another opening here that won't get cut out. This is where the pedo tube will get mounted up to. And this one will get cut out so we can hook the hoses up to the pedo tube. And the jury strut attach fittings couple more inspection covers there's no reason to cut these two out although they were cut out in the old wing uh, cover but there's really no reason to they're just inspection covers for those drag struts and drag struts again those seaplane grommets look a whole lot nicer than they did I wasn't very happy with those doilies that were over those seaplane grommets you can still see the slit that I had to cut there to make that thing fit down but they pretty much smoothed out pretty good this will get cut out here above this inboard flap hinge because that's where the hole where the there's a rod that comes out there to activate the flap and that's got to come out through that and then this gets cut out here you know, normally that would have two round 
covers on that, but I put a square one on there to make it a little easier to get in there to put that turnbuckle in there for the flap control. And then this would be where the fuel tank drain board is here. All in all, it looks pretty doggone good, I think. So there's a little bit of work to do on it yet, and I still got to cut out for a couple of these inspection covers like this one. And then there are ho screw holes here around the landing light bay, and those will have to get the heat and punch those holes out, burn those holes out. And we got openings that'll go into the wing route here for the fuel tanks. The filler hose here, the filler from the belly tank goes in right here. And then this will be one for an antenna cable. And then we've got the flap cable that goes back here. Fuel drain, fuel outlet right here. And these two right here will be cut out. These are for the uh, fuel gauge. Another fuel port down here. Uh, antenna cable goes in here. And the aileron cable comes out here. And then we got holes here in the fuel tank bay that'll have to be burned open for the cover for the fuel tank bay. I got to put some felt cushion goes on these straps in here for the fuel tank straps, the hold down straps. And here's the aileron cable here that'll be run out here. And then there is a plastic guide that goes in there for that. Like this one here. This one. There's another one of those that goes in that outboard rib. Oh, she's beautiful now. I think she looks pretty doggone good. So we'll let it sit here for a couple more days and let that paint flash off and, and harden up. It's still a little soft. It's only been about 12, 14 hours, something like that, since it was painted. So the paint's still a little bit soft. It's cool in here today. It's probably only in the 60s in here today. So we'll let that thing hang there. I've still got work to do. I've got work to do on that, but I've got some parts that I'm going to need to strip and paint, and then I've got a little bit of work to do on the airplane. But it's pretty much done. I think it's pretty good. It's ready for the wing to go in there just about and go on. And then we got some good days coming up. Tomorrow's July 4th, holiday of course, here in the good old US of A. It looks like the weather's supposed to clear off after that, tomorrow and then on beyond that, and get hot again. So I'll be able to open that hangar up, get all those tools and stuff out of there, and then we can uh, get some help and get that wing in there and get it mounted up on the airplane. Get it mounted up and then there'll be a little bit of work to do with it, getting it rigged and everything. We've got to run the aileron cables and put the landing lights in, the lights in and stuff like that. But there's rigging to do on the wing to get the dihedral and the washout right on it. Anyway, that's looking good. I'm happy now. I called my mechanic and he said he can't come to the 15th. I told him I wished he, hoped he could come a little sooner than that. I should be flying right now. Every time an airplane goes over, I cry. Happy that that's done anyway.